Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Make It! Today we're going to be making a natural dye. We're going to be making many dyes today. We're going to be making a purple dye with this cabbage. Uh, blue maybe. Green dye with spinach. Yellow and orange with turmeric. So if you, you're going to want to... Red cabbage is a really good um, thing to start out with because it's really potent and usually works. So. You just want to cut into it, and I, you don't need a lot, I usually only use like, I'll use half of it. I usually only use a quarter, but I'm dying a lot today, so I'll use half of it. Alright, so you just, now you're going to want to get a pretty big pot so that you don't want it to boil over and you want to be able to fit whatever you're going to dye. So you're going to want to take it and just cut it into really small pieces, and depending on what you're dying and how big it is, you're, you're going to want to use more. This is a pretty large amount. You could pro like if you're gonna dye a t-shirt or two, I'd just use um, half of it. Buddha thinks you're cutting food, like for him. <laughs> Buddha, you're it's not cabbage. Gonna like this. It's actually Easter tomorrow, and uh, you're probably watching this afterwards. But you can dye white eggs the same way you dye them with uh, chemical dyes, but with natural dye. So that's something fun to do. Um, the more you cut it, the better it's going to work because it's going to be the most surface area that way. And if you really want to, you could blend it up in a food processor or a blender or something like that. But it's not, what it's not hot dogs. Buddha. It's not hot dogs. What are you doing? We're trying to film a video. You're being disruptive, cutie pie. What are you doing? He thinks that we're cutting food for him, I think. Whoa, that, that really just quadrupled in size. Yeah. So, yeah. It gets... So cutting it in small pieces releases more of the natural pigment. Yeah. And so once you get that all good, you want to take it all and put it into your pot. Like I said, I recommend using a large pot. And this pot's pretty beat on it. It's like a really heavy, uh, heavy bottomed pot that Devin has been using for several years for different things. Some pots aren't quite so sturdy, and they're really thin, and uh, they might take more of a beating. Like, our pots, like a lot of my older pots, are kind of ruined, which is okay with me, because Devin uses them for projects, but I wouldn't use, like, your mom's best new yeah. <laughs> kitchenware, maybe, necessarily, maybe because... I don't want to ask first. Yeah, All because right. it, it does dye pots at times, and it's just harder, it's hard to clean, but... I know this going into it, so I give him pots that are kind of used and can handle the wear and tear. Now you're going to want about twice as much water as you have material here, and about, eh, and then about a quarter of however much water you have, you want to add salt. Like a lot of salt. Don't, there you go, that's probably enough. And the salt fixes the color to the fabric better, and it makes it so that it won't wash out. So now we're going to add our water. Alright, so and you want to make sure that the salt all kind of dissolves, which will happen when you put it on the stove, but you know. Alright, here we go. And then you just kind of want to, you want to put it on high and bring it to a boil and leave it there for a couple minutes and then take it down to a simmer for about an hour or so. And then that will give you purple. And then we'll talk about how to turn this kind of dye into other types once we get there. Now this is another color dye I was working on earlier today. It's green, as you can see. It's made out of spinach, and I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, now the next dye I'm gonna show you is green, and it's made from spinach. Now, I would use more, but I've already made quite a bit, and this is more for demonstration. So if you're gonna dye like a t-shirt, use twice as much, you know, use like, get two handfuls right, so put or whatever. the spinach in your food processor or blender, and then add about the same amount of water to it. Just gonna add a little bit of salt to this. And then, and you really don't need to do it for that long, just to kind of open everything up. And usually... Sometimes it goes everywhere, so I'm going to put this over it. Uh, yeah. See the stain right here that I noticed this morning? This is from Devin's last spinach <laughs> making green dye making process. I, I cleaned the counter. Well, you got most of it. Yeah. But then I woke up. It was up. everywhere, and I had to, yeah. <laughs> well, you missed right there. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> it's okay. okay.
And there we have it. So I'm just gonna combine this with the die I already have. Right here. Do keep an eye on it, on the stove guys, because when it boils over, because it's like a natural dye, it is very staining. Yes. Now this is probably the easiest dye to start with. You probably have it. It's called turmeric. It's a spice from India. And all you have to do is get a pot. You just, grab, you just get a pot of water, add heat to it. And then you just add a bunch of turmeric. Turmeric. How much, honey? Like, a, would you say like a tablespoon? Well, here, if you Because you don't really need to just dump it right no, in, I'm right? No, I know, no. You kind of have, I mean, you have to add quite a bit, but if you kind of... That's about, what do you, you just added like maybe a quarter of that container, the mm, small container. About half of it, yeah. A little bit more. I mean, you gotta use quite a bit of it. I, I probably added a little bit too much water in here, but that's okay. That looks like a perfect amount. How did you learn about these natural dyes? Like what started your interest in them? My interest started when I started weaving and I didn't want to have to buy all types of different colors. So I just figured I could probably do it at home and I looked it up online and you can. And these are some of the best ingredients to do at home for these different colors. Well, one thing you said before was that the natural dyes, the natural colors, just go together really well yeah, because yeah. they're like kind of earth tones. Mm -hmm. but they're all earthy, so they all go together. You don't really have to think a lot about what colors you put where, you know. All right, now, this is pretty good. So you got spinach going here for green, you got turmeric, and you got red cabbage. So what colors will those make? Obviously, the spinach will be green. Yeah. Well, if I if I let this boil for a while, it will become orange. Well, so basically, right now that what I have, I have the possibilities to make green, yellow, orange, blue, red, and purple. Wow. But so with three different dyes, you can make six different colors. That is correct. So all of these are kind of different. Uh, with the with the red cabbage, you wanna uh, hang on. With the red cabbage, you will kind of want to let it go for a while, like an hour maybe, right? And this is the color. It's kind of a, it's kind of hard to tell. It's kind of a faint bluish purple right now. Uh, so you want to let that go for a while. Let it boil. I'm going to keep it here for about five more minutes and bring it down to a simmer for about an hour. Same goes for the spinach, but the turmeric, turmeric, however you want to say it. Uh, you can pretty much use this as is right now. Um, because it doesn't really have to be heated up. If you add heat to it for a while, it will it will darken the color. So depending on um, depending on how like dark you want it, you can let it boil for a while. But you won't want to keep track of so it. I'm actually gonna put my my yarn in there right now. This is very heavy. So this is 100% cotton yarn, it's white obviously, and it's perfect for dyeing. Wool would probably be better, but you can't get that as easily, so. If you want to dye yarn, just use 100% cotton. So, we're going to put this in, and you want to you wanna soak it beforehand for a while to open up all the fibers and stuff. Alright, so let's put this in here. Ooh, There's wow, look at it color. already. Yeah. Ooh, it's so pretty. I love the yellow color. Yeah. I use turmeric a lot in uh, vegan cooking. I use it with tofu. I make this yummy breakfast called the tofu scramble, and when you crumble tofu, it looks just like scrambled eggs. And I add turmeric to give it like the yellow egg color. <laughs> and also, um, I use a lot of natural dyes for some like raw cheesecakes I make and stuff like that. I added Term too much water, so I put the rest of the turmeric in there. I love that color yellow, though. Like, if you want a light it yellow. It will be lighter, though, once it's, it will almost be non-apparent. Oh, it's... really? So it looks darker when it's wet? Yeah. Okay, that's a good tip and something important to know. But, uh, I am going to bring this to about a boil and then let it stop, because okay. I want a pretty potent color, you know? So if you're going to be dyeing yarn, uh, this is actually a pretty good brand. Peaches and cream, you can get it at Walmart. 
for like eight bucks. This is a big one, but you can get a smaller one. Um, I'm sure almost none of you have one of these, but you could use, when I started out, um, I just used this chair up on the table and I just wrapped the yarn around it, which I suggest you do something similar to that. And, and the reason for that, when I first, first started out, I'd just take big handfuls of it and put it in, but it'd get horribly tangled. And I'd have to cut it all the time, and I wasted a lot of it. This is probably the best way to get a big skein, that's what they call it, of yarn. And basically with this, you just... <laughs> you made this today, right? Yeah. With this, you just spin it, and it's really easy, but... Wow, you know, cool. For a while. But if you were just having, a, like, a chair, you could just wrap it around like that. It just takes longer. Right, this is easier because it... You spin it, and it, it's a much quicker process than you've been doing. Yeah. Now, the reason you do this, and the reason you don't just take a big ball of it, is first of all, if you take a ball, the middle of it won't die at all. Almost none of it will die, just the outer layer will. Um, once this is done, which I'm going to be doing this for about five more minutes probably, but you want to you wanna take a portion. So once you're done, you want to go in between, in between every chair leg and just tie it like that so that it doesn't, it won't get tangled on itself that way. So you want to do it here, 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 and here. You could do it at the corners too if you really want to. So being unschooled, I can learn whenever I want to, whenever I want to. In the last couple of weeks I've been exploring how to make natural dyes. I've just been looking it up online and there's a lot of good information there on how to do this. So. Well, so once you got your skin or whatever you're going to dye, just soak it in water. It's just normal water for just, you know, however long, five minutes or more. And yeah, really not that difficult to do that part. Now, I have a little experiment we're going to do. This is probably going to be crazy. If I just take... So if you take this, uh, the, the liquid from the cat, the the red cabbage. It's um it's on this only applies with this this uh red cabbage dye. This doesn't work with all the dyes. But um don't need that much. Alright so you get I have two jars right here of purple. Now with this red cabbage dye that's purple there's a lot of different, you have a lot of different choices to make with what color you want. If you just leave it as is, it will be purple. But, you can add different things to it to change the color of it. Here, here's some examples. If you take uh, lemon juice, get really close on this one. If you take lemon juice and put some of that in there. Wow, it's turning pink, like red. It'll turn red. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. You can so, see the comparison right there. Oh yeah, so that's just from adding lemon juice to the cabbage water? Yep. Cool. And then if you if you take just normal baking soda, you don't need a lot. Uh, this is like kitchen science. You stir that around. OMG, oh. blue! That's so yes. cool. Yeah, so that's how you make the range of colors that you've made with yep. your cool. What happens if you put that in red? If you combine the two, <laughs> yeah, so it blows up. <laughs> if you combine the two, it goes back to purple. Oh wow, that is really awesome. Ta da! Kitchen scientist Devin. I dare you to drink that, Ivy. <gasps> it's it's for one, it's boiling, sweetie. It's boiling oh, yeah. water. Uh, it's really important <laughs> to keep your area clean when you're doing this because the dishes will, and the things will pile up and uh, it will get a little bit uh, crazy and a little bit overwhelming. Here's how the... Oh, there's wow. the turmeric right now. That looks beautiful. What a rich... And the, tur the turmeric dies really well. It, it will pretty much be this color when it's done. Awesome. It, th that won't fade. Awesome. So here we go with the green. There we go. Okay, this is fine. Are you going to bring it to like a boil yep. again? Yep. I might actually add some of this back. I'm going to add a little bit of this back in here just because. You're not really going to be able to boil it well. It's going to like overflow everywhere. Don't worry. I have my methods, mama. 
I trust you, son. Who? Swampy. <laughs> swamp water. Swampy. Swamp string. <laughs> swamp. Spam and Martin's famous swamp string. <laughs> so now with the cabbage, you're gonna wanna use a strainer and a bucket to strain out all the liquid, all the liquid from the cabbage leaves. Here we go. Wow. Once you do that, you want to add the liquid back in carefully. You don't want any of it to spill. Let's say grape juice. Yeah. You were so cool, somebody. Have some grape juice out here. Cabbage yes, water. Cabbage, Ooh. Some cabbage water. That'd be a good Ooh. prank. It's really a pretty, pretty color. Now I'm going to add some baking soda. Yes. It's blue. It gets a lot darker. How does it look? Wow. Honey, that's so cool. Magic. Once I get some more strength, I'll submerge it in here and then we'll be good. So now if we dip this dye or this string in the blue dye. Wow. That's how it is right now. That is so beautiful. I absolutely love that color. Yeah, it's nice. Wasn't it cool you were showing me a video earlier about uh, indigo, which of course I love that color being indigo rose 33. Um, and the way that they dye with indigo, it wasn't until the dye, like the fabric hit the air, that it turned blue. It'd be green and then it would turn blue immediately. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow, I love the rich color of this red cabbage. So this this is the red cabbage with baking soda? Is that what yep. this one is? Yep. Okay. Wow, it's just such pretty colors. They're like Easter colors. Too nice. All right, so uh, this stuff has been in here for about as long as I want it to be. So I'm gonna take it out now and get it ready to be dried out. So what you're going to want to do is just take the whole thing and put it into a strainer in your sink. Just like that. And it's the same for everything. You might want to rinse it if there's a lot of, like, uh, this and the blue isn't very bad, but the spinach has a lot of chunks in it, which I intend on rinsing out. You actually probably want to rinse this out too. <laughs> Miranda! Alright, and the last one is the spinach one. Spinach. Love you too, baby. <laughs> nice. That scared me. This, oh my gosh, what a prank, Devin. We have to do a prank on somebody. How? Oh. What about Amber when she comes? We'll say this is zucchini pasta. Hey, let's put it on a plate. She might be watching this now, Mom. Oh. Oh, Amber, I was just joking. <laughs> so if you're. If you're one of the people who has a dehydrator, this is a perfect thing to use. You just want to take out one of the shelves. This dehydrator is a 9-tray Excalibur with a temperature control. It's for my raw food preparation. And it's really cool that it also works for Devin to be able to dry his it's kind yeah, of hard to yarn. try to get it to overlap as little as possible. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, oh my goodness. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Put it on in. If you're gonna put them in the oven, just put try to lay them out like like right now how it's not it's not really overlapping. And you wanna imitate a dehydrator with your oven. Which means to keep it on the lowest temperature yeah, that your oven will yeah. possibly go on with the oven door cracked. That's the way to model a dehydrator with your oven. Do not, it would not be good if you like turn the oven on like 350 no, yeah. with a string in there. Yeah. Um, and if you're just gonna do it, just like, if you're gonna just hang it, just hang it up. Hey guys, it's the next day and I am using my yarn for a project. I'm uh, making a scarf for a four year old in England. And it's gonna be amazing. So basically, uh, this is just one of the many things you could do with, if you dye yarn, you could weave it, you could knit it or crochet with it. So this is the yarn, some of the yarn that you dyed yesterday and dried? Yeah. This is some oh, of the, cool. the rest of it. And then I have a some more right here, which I have Oh yeah, the spinach. <laughs> So this loom, um, I took a picture of before and shared. It's called a warp-weighted loom, yep. and these these are the weights, right? Yep. 
Cool. Precisely. How long will it take you? Like, how long did it take to thread this uh, loom? It looks pretty complicated. Two or three hours, probably. Wow. Because I, like, just, like, I have to do all this part to separate those all out. That wow. took a while, and then I have to do all these. That takes a while. Because I have to be able to fit properly through all those. And you have to match up all the colors so it's even. It's coming out really pretty. This is really amazing, hun. I mean, this is a pretty big loom that I think, you know, pretty much everybody doesn't have unless you're really into it. But if you want to start weaving, this is a loom too. This was my first loom that I made. And it's really easy if you want to, you could do it with a picture frame if you look up, uh, just look up frame loom and something like this will come up and I'll show you how, you how to use it and you can weave, you could definitely weave something like this on it, it would just take a little bit longer. If you do, make anything with your yarn that you dyed, uh, or if you just dye anything at all, send us some photos. I'd love to see what you guys made. Well thank you for watching our make it episode on how to dye things naturally. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, share, and bye. <laughs>